About four or five months ago, I came up with an idea that on paper didn't seem like it would take very long, but here we are after all that time and needless to say, it took a while and I'm super excited to share it with you. To start, I'll give you a little bit of context. Just over a year ago, I bought myself a pair of Suriname toads. They're an incredible animal that I was super excited to add down here to the animal room since they're not very common. Even though they're uncommon, they're infamously known for how they give birth. The eggs get embedded into the female's back, and after a certain amount of time, toadlets emerge from her back. It's kind of fascinating, but I know that a lot of people find it gross. My thought was that I wanted to shed some light on these often misunderstood animals, and I hope to do that more moving into the future. Anyway, fast forward a few months and I set up this 75 gallon tank. Now it's good that I didn't stock it right away because I had a serious issue with the driftwood. It fouled the entire tank and I actually had to dismantle it and redo the scape. That's the scape you see here and at this point the toads have been living in it for many months. For the duration that they've been in this tank and pretty much the entire time that I pad them, I've noticed a camaraderie between the two. They often spend time together just kind of sitting in the water doing their thing, but every now and again I'll catch them in amplexes. The thing is though that I don't really know to what extent they're even trying, but the reality is that this tank is not ideal for their breeding behaviors. It's a good size for them to live in, but if I want to facilitate those behaviors, they need more height. They do a backflip of sorts up and down the water column and this tank just isn't tall enough for that sort of behavior. And that's where this 110 tall comes into play. It's kind of a weird dimension, it's basically just a 75 gallon tank that's 30 inches tall. Now it's currently what they're in now but since we need the extra height this should be ideal. Before we can get started though I gotta make a few modifications. The thing about this tank is that it will function best with a sump. More on the specifics behind that later, but for now I've got to account for these bulkheads. I've got three of them, I'll put two on this side and one over on that side. And for proper placement and to help me easily draw into the tank, I've made this little jig. This is just a scrap piece of PVC board that I made a few measurements on and drilled in holes for proper placement of the bulkheads. Now to actually drill the holes, I've got this diamond tipped hole saw and using this will make it much easier to get the job done. I've turned the tank on its side and I also put a little bit of duct seal putty on the jig here to create a watertight seal. Now one of the things I recommend doing before you drill a tank is check to see if the glass is tempered. Now the easiest way to go about doing that is with a pair of polarized sunglasses. You'll also need an LCD screen. Put the screen inside of the tank and turn the sunglasses to see what happens. If there are weird lines and irregularities then that means it's tempered and it can't be drilled. If it blacks out then you're good to go. Now that I'm safe to drill this tank, I'm going to get to work. I firmly pressed the jig into the glass. Then I filled it up with some water, which will keep the bit from overheating. And I drilled away. As I'm doing this, I'm trying not to put pressure on the drill itself, but allowing the weight of the drill to do the work. Eventually, you'll make it through the glass as I did here. Once I did, I removed the jig and cleaned away the debris. Then I repeated the process on the other side. You'll see that I made a few other holes here for better placement of the return. More on that later. And after that, I ended up with three holes on the aquarium. Now, if you look at these closely, you'll notice that there's some blowout on the exterior of the tank. Now, that means that I didn't do as good of a job as I probably should have, but since it's isolated to the exterior, it's actually not that big of a deal. The reason being that the gasket for the bulkhead goes on the inside of the tank, and all of those areas are actually pretty clean. So even though you want to avoid blowout as much as possible, if you start from the interior of the tank, in most cases you can avoid having any issues with the seal. I got the tank moved into the animal room and onto the rack. I'll talk more about that later, but for now I've got to get these bulkheads installed. It's a good practice to wipe off the glass first. Occasionally leftover debris could cause the bulkhead not to seal properly. After that I center the bulkhead in the hole and tighten it down by hand. Then I go back with a pair of channel locks and give it about a half turn. You don't want to go too far with this because you could easily crack the glass. This is one of those scenarios where I think it's best not to DIY the backgrounds. I had some issues with the ones I did in the previous tank that I'd rather not deal with again, so I decided to go with some backgrounds from Universal Rocks. The one that I have here is a flat. It's only an eighth of an inch thick, which means that it will be ideal to apply to the bottom of the tank. If you recall from the previous build, I stated that I didn't want to put a loose substrate in the tank because the toads could possibly ingest it and become impacted. Going with that again, I felt that this was the best solution. To secure this to the bottom of the tank, I'm going to use some silicone. Prior to all this though, I cleaned off the glass and the background with rubbing alcohol. This will remove any debris that could compromise the adhesion. 
I generously applied silicone to the bottom of the tank. Then I pressed the background in place. I used boards and weights to hold down the background while the silicone cured. After that, I removed the boards and weights, and here we are the next day. I've got another background here. This one looks like vines, and it has a pretty cool look to it, and it will wrap around both sides and back of the tank. The installation for this isn't going to be as straightforward. I'm going to roll it up and put it into the tank to start. I got it all rolled out and in the tank. You notice that it's a little bit too long though, so I'm just going to chop some of this off here, and I also got to account for the bulkheads. I just stick a sharpie through the hole and make a few marks. I went back with the Forstner bit to make the holes. I also cut off the excess background with a kitchen knife. I know that sounds weird, but it's actually one of the best tools for the job. Now that I have that all accounted for, I can secure it in the tank with more silicone. I pulled the material away from the glass and began on the left side. I applied silicone all over the glass, except for the area near the bulkheads. I left this spot exposed in case I ever need to access them, and this way it would be easier to pull down the background. Anyway, I went on to press the background into the silicone. I also put PVC pipes in the bulkheads to make sure everything was properly aligned. I continued this process moving from left to right. After I pressed the background into the silicone, I put clamps all along the top to keep it in place. I secured a lock line in this bulkhead. Again, I'm just making sure that everything's properly aligned. To finalize this process, I used some PVC boards, PVC pipes, and insulation foam to keep everything pressed up against the glass while the silicone cures. It's a bit of an annoying process, but it works really well. I'm going to let this set up overnight, and then we'll come back and remove the pieces and add the details. It's all set up and ready to go. Now when I'm talking about adding more details, I mean that I need to go and embellish the background. If you'll see here on this sample, the vine is a lot more prominent on this section right here. And I did that with some silicone and pigments. All you do is apply the silicone to the background and embed it with different pigments, kind of like paint, till you get the look that you want. I think that if I go around and accentuate the vines on this, it's just going to look that much better. And that's exactly what I did. I went around the entire background using that silicone and pigment method to make all of the vines look cohesive. Here's a little before and after. I don't know about you, but I think this minor adjustment made a huge difference. You'll notice also that I put a few rocks down here on the bottom. Those are actually left over from whenever I did the 350, and they just so happened to match this scape. These also came from Universal Rocks. I siliconed them to the rest of the background. Then I went back and hid the seams like before. At this point, I'm finally ready to start scaping, and for the majority of it, I'm going to use manzanita wood. Prior to use though, I sanded off the tips to remove any sharp points. I chose these because if used properly, you can make them look like vines or roots from trees, which obviously goes with this aesthetic. Anyway, as I constructed the scape, I built out from a central point on the right side. My idea here is to make them look like roots from a tree branching out into the water. As I worked the pieces in, I secured them to the background with expanding foam. After it cured, I removed the expanded portions by hand and concealed it like before. I also made a few mounds on the bottom of the tank so it doesn't look as flat. I concealed these and the seam between the backgrounds. It took a long time to get it just right. I gave it a spray down to get rid of all of the excess debris, and here it is after all of that. I think it looks great and should function perfectly for the toads. They have plenty of open spaces to swim around in, and hiding spots within the scape. I should mention that I also included some spider wood to better fill in the scape. It will look even better once it's filled with water, but before then I have to address filtration. That probably doesn't sound like a big deal, but the issue is finding a place for these heaters. If left out in the open, the toads could rest on them and potentially burn their skin. I could leave them in the tank like this and put a cage around them to protect the toads. That would be a serious eyesore. Plus, we gotta make sure we get proper water circulation around the heaters so that they don't malfunction. The best solution is to put the heaters into the filter itself, and I wanted max flexibility with this so I decided to go with a sump. I went with the standard 20 gallon long. Now, I'm not trying to do anything crazy here, so I just added three baffles. It's a simple process. I started by making a few measurements. Then I siliconed the pieces of glass near the left side of the tank. Here's how it will work once it's hooked up to the tank. 
Water will come into this first compartment and then overflow into the second. In the second, I'll have some filter foam and metolomat which will mechanically filter the water. After the water passes through these components, it will travel under the second piece of glass and overflow from the third into the final compartment. In this compartment, I'll of course have the two 200 watt heaters, as well as the return pump and a stream pump. As I said earlier, it's really important to have proper water circulation around the heaters, so the stream pump's gonna allow me to do that. I should mention also that I got both of these pumps from my friends over at Seache. Anyway, this compartment will also house all of the biological filter media. I chose a mix of materials including ceramic rings, lava rock, and leka. I put these in zip up filter bags and dropped them into the sump. I also used some twin wall polycarbonate panels to cover the top. These are a great option because they'll help retain the heat, reduce evaporation, and they're very durable. I created three panels so that access into the sump is easier. At this point I've got the tank all filled up and running. It looks really good and the sump is working perfectly. On the tank itself I also have some polycarbonate lids. I sectioned these into two and put venting holes near the front. These make it easy to open the lids without any hardware and allow for better air exchange. Inside the tank are two elbows which skim the surface of the water where it overflows into the sump. I made these out of 3 quarter to 1 inch elbows that are connected to PVC pipes. I painted them with Krylon Fusion paint, which once dry is fine for tanks because it bonds with the plastic. You may be wondering though, why did you go with two overflows? Now this wasn't the original plan, but I built the stand prior to getting the tank, and once I got the tank, I found out that only the sides of it were able to be drilled, so I kind of had to work around that. I didn't want to have to rebuild the stand, and I only have so much room to work with, so for this one I felt that it made sense to add two small overflows as opposed to one large one. Anyway, these are hooked up to elbows on the opposite side, which are connected to some flex tubing. These go into the first compartment of the sump. From there, the water flows through the system as I showed earlier. Once the water makes its way over to the pump, it gets sent back up into the tank through a flex tube. It's then sent into the tank through a lock line, which I'm able to manipulate however I want. As for the heaters, I decided to hook them up to a digital thermostat. This allows me to monitor the temperature with ease from my phone and gives me another failsafe in case something goes wrong. Inside of the display I hid the temperature probes. I just ran them along the spider wood and zip tied them on there the best I could to hide them from view. They're still a little bit visible but I didn't want to take off the time and effort to completely hide them in case I have to replace it later on. At this point you're probably tired of hearing about the heaters but I can't stress it enough. Redundancy is key here to ensure that this is a safe environment for our animals. The heater is probably the number one component to go wrong in a fish tank, so it definitely helps to add additional fail safes like the digital thermostat. I've had issues in the past where a heater would just randomly malfunction and cause the tank to get way hotter than it should have been and killed pretty much all of the livestock. So in this instance, I think it's very important because the toads prefer a very consistent temperature. They can live within a range, but they like it when the temperature is the same pretty much all the time. Anyway, I could go on and on about this, but I think it's time to finish the design so we can add the toads. Suriname toads mimic the look of leaves and hide in them, so it makes total sense to include them in this tank. I have a mix of sea grape and magnolia leaves that I boiled ahead of time. That way they'll sink in the tank. I went back and forth on adding plants to this setup because I really like the hardscape. That said, I decided to add Bulbitis pseudolotai. It's an epiphytic plant, so I was able to simply zip tie it to the branches. I think the pops of green are welcomed, and this plant complements the scape. As I was doing this, you probably noticed that the lights overhead looked a little different. For most of the video, I was using an LED strip light. It looked fine, but I decided to swap it out for two LED spotlights. These create more drama and allow for more flexibility. I can adjust the brightness, color, and other settings to get the exact look that I want. Unrelated, but I also had to put some foam behind the background so the toads can't get back there. As I said earlier in the video, I'll briefly touch on the stand design. It has doors underneath to the sump, a piece that swings open to access the top, and an overall seamless look that hides the edges of the tank. I still have to cover the side openings, but I think you get the idea. 
And again, I designed the scape itself with the best of both worlds in mind. I have hiding places down on the leaf litter and within the background, as well as open places for swimming. With all of that in mind, I was also trying to create something that accentuates the cryptic nature of the toads. I don't know about you, but I'd say this tank is finally ready to go. I'm tired of imagining what Pancake and Flapjack will look like in here, so why don't we go ahead and add them. I can't even begin to explain how excited I am to see the toads in this setup. It's something I've imagined for so long now, and to see it come to fruition is special. Whether or not this encourages them to breed, I think the height of this tank, along with the way it scaped, really showcases them well. A move will always stress the animals, but I can tell in just the short amount of time that they've been in here that they'll do great. They hid within the hardscape, burrowed in the leaves, swam in the water, and of course spent time together. I'm not sure how social these are in the wild, but I swear they're almost always together. I'd be curious to see how they behave in a larger group. All in all though, I can't be happier about this and I can't wait to share more about them in the future. I've been absolutely captivated by Pancake and Flapjack ever since I got them, and if you can't get enough of them as well, then maybe you'd be interested in this all over t-shirt. I'll leave links for it down in the video description if you are. I know, I don't really talk about that stuff very often, but I thought it was the appropriate time to do so since they're on the shirt. Anyway, I had so much fun doing this build and I'm so excited to have finally completed it, and that means we've got a free 75. Let me know what you want to see in that, I have a few ideas, but I'm curious to know what you think. As always, I really hope you enjoyed the build. Let me know what you think about it down in the comments. I hope to share more about them in the future. And until next time, Serpa Squad, take care.